Welcome to episode number 123 of the Life Changing Questions podcast. Today, I have an absolute uh, legend of the industry is Neil Trickerico. Now, Neil and I, Neil, we've gone back maybe uh, five, six, maybe even seven years now. Uh, we used to work together uh, at the Tony Robbins organization. And when I give you uh, Neil's bio, you're going to be so impressed with Neil and so excited to hear this episode. He has 23 years in sales and sales leadership. He began his career uh, with Deepak Chopra and went on to, uh, to addition, not only help Deepak grow his business, but to go on and found the team with Tony Robbins to create Tony's business mastery program. As uh, one of Tony's uh, executive sales leaders, uh, Neil implemented his selling with intention methodology, uh, and that helped Tony's four sales divisions uh, go to record-breaking results. Um, Neil's work focuses on increasing sales and profits and market share for utilizing the most ethical, efficient, and effective influence selling and client relationship skills. He's worked uh, more recently with the scalable company, you know, a digital marketer. And in uh, in his first year with that team, he helped them grow 371. Uh, percent Wouldn't you love to uh, to grow your sales by 371? percent That's amazing. Uh, Neil now has founded and owns the uh, Ultimate Growth, and he helps impact driven companies to double their sales by teaching uh, and building and installing proven scalable systems and processes. So I said you'd be blown away because that's such a, uh, an amazing skill set. We're so lucky to have you. Uh, Neil, welcome to uh, this episode. Thanks, Kevin. Man, I'm, I'm glad to be here beyond belief. It has been six years since I first met you. And, and quite frankly, the, the seeds of what this business has become is, is due in part to, to our work together when you were coaching me, man. So I can't thank you enough. Uh, hey, well, entirely my pleasure. You are uh, always, always great to uh, work with Neil because, as I say, you, you have such a, a standout track record. Tell us a little bit about your journey because, you know, these are names that people listening will hear. They will know Deepak Chopra and Tony Robbins and uh, other people may also know the Scalable Company and, and the work that they do there. So tell us a little about your journey. How have you become such a, an expert in this field of sales and selling? Well, if you believe in the universe or God or being divinely led, whatever that might be. That's kind of how it happened to me. I came up in software sales in Silicon Valley in the late 90s, early 2000s, was a top producer in that space. Um, that was the time period of Coffees for Closers, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, right? A lot of hard closing. And I was uncomfortable. I was a reluctant salesperson. And long story short, my wife and I decided to move from the Bay Area to the sweet spot of the universe here in San Diego. I got the sun and the beach out here. And I had made a decision through um, some work I had done with this woman named Joanne Martin Braun, who was like a career psychologist. And I got really laser beam focused on my mission, what I was looking for. Uh, I wanted to become a, a sales leader. And initially I had set my sights on being a player coach where I could work in sales and lead people but that I wanted to work in a mission-driven organization, right? I wanted to demystify this idea of sales as something other. And I made a commitment after going abroad all summer with my wife and going to the beach uh, for a few months here and living with her parents. I made a commitment that day that I was going to apply for every sales or sales management job on Craigslist. That's where you went back then. And um I don't know, there was this sales management position with the Chopra Center. I had no idea who Deepak Chopra was. I looked it up, seemed a little bit woo-woo and out there. But my mother-in-law, <laughs> when she heard, she just jumped and she showed me this bookshelf of all these books and explained who he was. And um, yeah, that's that's how I wound up in that space with him. Uh, I, know I don't want to go too far down a rabbit hole. I'm sure we'll get into stuff and he introduced me to Tony, and that's that's how I got into this impact space, this growth space, spirituality. Um, you know, nothing happens by chance, but this this was was pretty special. Yes, well, uh, who knows? Uh, you maybe you set your intention on that, and then that came to you. You said you wanted an impact or mission driven organization. <laughs> what a, what a great place to to find yourself in. Now, I'd love to hear from you a little bit of your insights because. You've helped, um, these are brand names, everyone uh, knows who these organizations are, but you've gone in there and 
with your skills and your methodologies, you've been able to help them even increase their sales and achieve record-breaking results. What do you look for in organizations? How do you identify such opportunities? Well, um, I've been fortunate because once I had the success at the Chopra Center, um, that was through some, some work with the CEO at the time, David Greenspan. Once I had that success there, those other doors opened for me. Um, so it became more of a disqualification. But what I'm looking for in the clients that I work with, the organizations that I work with are, are you know, it's, it's, I don't want it to sound cliche, but it's mission-driven organizations. That mission's got to be around impact. It's got to be about improving lives, you know, lives, clients' lives, customers' lives. Um, the, the culture is really important to me, what's happening inside. And also an alignment around this belief that sales isn't going to be something that we're going to do um, or manipulate. You know, the, the first realization I had of that was when I met with Deepak. And, you know, Deepak was really resistant to marketing and sales. I mean, I think I remember he literally put his fingers up like this. And it just came to me as I explained to him that I too felt the same way, and that it was important to me to demystify sales as something other, something we become, something we have to do, be in order to sell or close other human beings. That my hypothesis was that if we could just take all of that away and peel back to our true selves and bring about the attributes and the connection and the relationships that we have that are most important to us in our lives, that that would be enough, right? Because if we connect with someone, if they trust and respect us, then they'll probably allow us to, to ask them questions, to explore whether or not we can help them. And then, and only then, should we offer our product or service? We'd, we have a moral obligation to do it if we can help them. We'd also have a moral obligation to not sell or close them. And I just remember sitting across from him and explaining to him, and I, I hadn't thought about this before the interview, but I was like, listen, we're just going to look at marketing as education, all right? So the marketing department, all we're doing is looking to educate your followers, your tribe, and sales, all we're looking to do is serve them. So I made a commitment to him that we would use that languaging internally. And so from that day forward, um, our marketing department and anything that had the word marketing was education and, and sales was all about service. I, I love that. Those words are so important because those words change the whole energy of the relationship. Um, yeah. Sometimes, and many people on the call may have this experience, and now I have the idea of marketing and selling. For some people that can feel a little bit sleazy or a little bit slimy in some way because it's the intention is about I'm trying to get something from you. But with those change of words, it changes the whole energy, doesn't it? Because you're trying to uh, serve, you're educating and serving. I, I love what a great distinction. Now, you, you said something else pretty important in there. It's, it's about the relationship and about the connection. It, it truly is. Um, people are, are really looking to do, you know, if they're going to get into a relationship with you, they want to know that you're a good person and that there's, you know, yes. this thing is going to work for them. So that, that's so key. When you're within those organizations or any organizations you work with now, as you're looking to help grow their uh, the business and their you know their sales or you know the, the clients that they bring in, what are some of the things that you look for? What are the some of the wins that maybe um, our listeners today could even think about applying to their business straight away? Well, that's a great question. I mean, I'm looking for leadership, all right, especially in sales organization. Leadership is different than management, all right. So if you think about oh, um, sales management or sales manager, typically those organizations are focused on activities, tracking and measuring activities, which is different than leadership. Leadership is empowering other human beings, your direct reports to, to unlock their best possible capabilities and be their own leaders, even if they're individual contributors in service of clients in service of themselves, in service of supporting their family. So oftentimes those things won't exist. Um, very few organizations that I've come into, those things um, pre-exist, but the owner or entrepreneur wants them to exist. And they don't, they don't not exist by any fault of the entrepreneur in most cases with the organizations that I've worked with. Um, you know, the entrepreneur built the business on her blood, sweat, and tears. 
Maybe she was the number one salesperson. As soon as she brings in a manager or someone to lead the team, then you become beholden to them, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a different kind of energy and atmosphere. And I'm not suggesting that, you know, all those people get replaced or anything like that. But I guess coming all the way back to your question is, for anyone that's listening, I would implore you to shift the conversation from sales management and sales manager, which is the management of activities, which ultimately ends up resulting in transactional relationships and focus on leadership. Leadership involves empowering others, growing others, mentoring others, mentoring others but you need to have a system in place to hold them accountable. But then what that does is it shifts the, the activity the interaction from transactional, I need to sell them, I need to close them to something of a higher value that says, well, I need to understand what's most important to this person, right? What do they really actually need? They're going to be coming to us for what they think they want, but what do they need? And when I'm, when I'm serving them at the level of their most important needs or outcomes, then we transcend transactional activity, manager management, into relationship, high value, what's most important to the other? I, uh, I already know which type of organization I'd like to deal with. <laughs> and it certainly doesn't sound like the managers. So that's a really important distinction. We don't want to get into a transactional situation. We want to get really focused on, on their needs and, uh, and help lead that and come from a place of service. Uh, that's pretty, you know, tell us a little just bit more real quick, about- you know, Sorry to cut you yeah, off. I think it's a really important distinction. Um, no one wants that anymore. No, no one wants to be sold to anymore. This isn't like so much driven by me or I'm something special. Back in the day, there was an expectation to be sold or closed, but no, no one wants that anymore. So organizations are, are trying to figure out how to shift that as, as the sales profession has been slow to evolve to its, its prospects and clients. I, it's such an important distinction. And I think we've, we've all felt that energy where we've been on the wrong side of that transaction where someone is just trying to sell us. And uh, I think the term I've heard before is like that person has commission breath and you just feel it's about them and, and what they're going to get as opposed to meeting your needs and what you're going to you know, uh, get from this relationship and this connection. Neil, tell us a little bit further because you've applied this in some large organizations, but now you uh, have gone out on your own. It's a, it's a big step for an entrepreneur to take that leap of um, providing their magic to another organization and then doing it for yourself. Tell us about your vision around ultimate growth and uh, what you're doing. Yeah, great question. I appreciate you asking. The truth is ultimate growth has been around since 2012. It was actually Chet Holmes. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Chet Holmes, the author of the ultimate sales machine. God rest his soul. It. Yeah. He and, and Tony partnered together to build business mastery. That's how I got involved with Tony, but Chet always implored me to, to make sure I myself was staying entrepreneurial. So I've always had some clients and some things on the side. And, and in 2012, I think one of the most important distinctions was developing my own framework, building a, an instrument around it, what I call the sales strengths identifier, so we can have that confluence of science, those inherent attributes that exist in someone with sales themselves. So I think the biggest distinction was that I enjoyed my time, especially, well, at all the places, Deepak Chopra, Tony Robbins, even with with Ryan and the guys, Tony, especially a decade or more there and the impact that we had. But what I realized was that's one organization, right? So I can have that impact. I'm really grateful that he allowed us to install this methodology, you know, across four teams and have the results that we had. Um, but it, it, there's not breath to it. And so if I'm to achieve my own personal mission, of demystifying sales is something other, I'm not going to get there one job at a time. So I've been fortunate. This is the right time I'm in my life. And, and over the years, uh, with the relationships that I've made, I've been able to build a partnership, um, bring into some partners and some people that, that are experts and their superpowers are my weaknesses. So now it's a business. But most importantly, what it enables us to do is to impact more organizations. Because it's not rocket science, we'll come in, we'll do a sales discovery audit, understand where you are, where you wanna be, 
and then cover the growth plan to help you get there. And then whether it's myself or any of my leaders, we can install that framework and, and stay on for eight weeks, 90 days, a quarter, implement that and then empower the leaders to continue that on. So I'm an entrepreneur at heart. I would be lying to you if I said I didn't want to run my own business, but what really Ultimate Growth Inc. is about, Ultimate Growth is about is I'm not gonna get to the fulfillment of my mission one job at a time. This en enables me to empower others and to, to multiply our impact. I love that, multiplying your impacts, reaching more people. And if I'm uh, listening on, on the podcast and I'm interested in something like this, because I know look, my sales team, for example, could grow, I could get more revenue, more clients. Uh, what type of business do I need to be? You've already mentioned that I maybe need to be impact focused, but is there is there anything else that's important for the organizations that you work with? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's impact uh, focused. It's it's you you know the the CEO, the leader, entrepreneurs has to be open to change. And then I think what's most important is there there needs to be some sales reps. You know, I would say at least three sales reps. You know, ideally four, five, ten. But that sales is a function, and most importantly, human to human sales would be most impactful. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Very clear. You know, I'd love to, uh, to mix things up now and jump to the uh, heart of this podcast, which is around life changing questions. And we say yes. the quality of the questions we ask ourselves really impacts the quality of the life uh, that we're having. And so with that being true, what's one question that you've asked that's had the biggest impact either on yourself or the clients that you've served? Well, it's, it's, I, you know, I, I've shared this with you and I'm honored that you've asked this question. I think that's what makes this podcast so powerful. It's, it's a question that I've asked over the course of the 26 years. And um, it, it came to me at a turning point or at a moment of inflection in my career where I had to decide, did I want to continue to be this salesperson to put on this, this cloak. And even though as a top producer and making a ton of money, every day I would be come back and shower this off of me. And so the question I asked myself then was, is it possible to enroll other human beings in a product or service without being salesy? And that was my mission was to prove out that I could be who I am and connect with other human beings in the way that I always have, that would result in an enrollment. And it's a long answer to your short question, but it was really born out of this issue or challenge that I had where, or opportunity, I guess you would call it, is that um, when I left the legal profession and I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do to a person, friends and family were telling me, you've got to get into sales. Sales would be so great for you. And I was reluctant all the way through. And then I was good at it. And then I almost felt shame and guilt about it because I didn't like who I was. So the question was, could a human being, regardless of their you know, personality type or trait, enroll or parentheses sell other human beings without having to become a sales professional? I love that. I, even the language in the question, not, not close not sell, enroll them. And that, yeah. that also feels very different. And I, I really wanna uh, keep pointing out these amazing choices of language that Neil is using because they're, they're subtle, but actually it makes a very big difference to how you feel and how other people receive that energy. So is it possible I to enroll- think, I think that's- oh, Sorry, I think it's, I was just say, I think it's a really important distinction. You hear enrollment more and more these days, but enrollment is something the prospect is choosing to do themselves. They're choosing to enroll in your program. They're choosing to enroll in your product or service. When someone is sold, that's something that the rep is doing to them. I Ooh. sold them this, right? And yeah. there's a real important distinction there. I mean, that's what my whole framework is predicated on is when the prospect articulates in their own words why they must enroll themselves 
you, you, you have enrollment or why they must move forward. You have enrollment. You haven't sold them, right? So if we go through our process, the ultimate outcome in my intentional sales framework is for the, the prospect or client to articulate to you why they must move forward with your product or service. When they do that, you have enrollment. You don't need to close. When they don't, you may have some questions or some gaps that need to be closed, but ultimately you and they can determine together this is a fit or it's not a fit. So this whole idea of sales is out. It's gone. It's, it's such a powerful, powerful distinction. And I, I've had the, uh, the privilege of uh, helping enroll people into programs before, and it feels so much different when you, you come from that perspective of enrolling as opposed to, to selling them. Because like you say, it's something that they want to do and that you've agreed together, this is how we can move forward, uh, as opposed to having been on the other side of that and feeling trying, someone trying to sell. It just the energy feels very different. Uh, Neil, I'd imagine with your clients, this also makes a big difference to how long those clients then stick around. Because if they made a choice that they've chosen to enroll, presumably they're more engaged in the process and, and want to stay with an organization, organization longer too. Yeah, it's so true. So you're, you're absolutely right. My philosophy for my clients is a model that I call RAD, retention, acquisition, development. And retention is your most important sales strategy. Every month that you retain a client is far more profitable than what it costs to acquire one. So it's not just I put the R up front because RAD's a cool acronym. It's, it's, <laughs> it's literally your number one sales strategy. You, know, you can't retain a client without acquiring them. And development strategies are those things that you can offer them in addition to the services that they initially signed up for. So I want that for my clients. That's the ultimate realization of my involvement with them. For myself and my partners in our business and Ultimate Growth Inc., it's true, but, but it's not designed for me or my team to stay on. This while really profound and interesting, isn't rocket science. So again, why I left the jobs, I get asked all the time, why would you ever leave Tony Robbins? Why would you ever leave Deepak Chopra? Why would you ever leave? Well, I'm blessed that they're still my friends and I'm still connected with them. I leave because if I stay, I don't have the opportunity to expand more and impact more. So, so nowadays that's my outcome to, to provide everything that a sales organization needs, the system, the playbook, the framework, seven-step intentional sales process, leveraging the sales strengths identifier to recruit, and then to move on. But people will ask, hey, we would love you know, for you to stick around or, or to make sure this is happening. So we do have fractional sales leaders. So you know, somebody who can work in a fractionalized way as that go between between the sales team and the business owner or entrepreneur. So they're holding the team accountable, they're setting the commitments, they're hitting the numbers, they're breaking down the tape, but an owner can benefit from a fra fractionalized way because they don't need a full-time person. And so that, that ends up being a win-win in terms of retention, but myself and my team can still continue to go on to, to other organizations. Awesome. Hey, Neil, just, uh, just so I'm clear on that, in terms of the RAD model, so retention is about uh, how long we keep the client, acquisition yes. is about acquiring them in the first place, and in development, presumably, is that about helping them purchase, uh, you know, and enroll in more services and have more experiences with you? Yes, or, or me or the client, right? The client. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm most interested in the, in the client, but for instance, that's exactly it. So, I, I don't know, in sales, it's called land and expand. I don't like that, but development is development opportunities, right? So, if I'm working with a sales organization, and, you know, we've had the whole team take their sales strengths identifier. We've done the audit. We've made our recommendations. We've trained the team and improved. Well, a natural development opportunity is to bolt on our right fit recruiting mechanism. And so right fit says, all right, well, let's take the sales strengths identifier that we have. Let's put it up front in the recruiting mechanism. So rather than this old school idea of people applying submitting a resume that's filled with lies and then selling themselves in an interview. Our development strategy that we can bolt on for our clients is that rad fit where we help them develop the ads, the copy, the social media to recruit candidates. But as the, the process goes like this, instead of 
uh, applying, submitting a resume and interviewing, it starts with the sales strengths identifier. If they don't meet the required thresholds for success in this environment, they receive a professional rejection notice. If they do meet that minimum level, then they submit it a minute and a half to a three minute video of themselves selling the hiring manager on why they're the next best fit. But then for the interview process, we take that sales strengths identifier, an interview guide that we create, and we match their weaknesses and put them into role plays that will really actually happen in that sales environment so that we can suss out whether or not those gaps are trainable, whether or not we can improve on those weaknesses. And it's, a, it's a, had a really profound impact because not only for the business, you know, some studies show right now, bad hire and sales could cost a hundred thousand dollars. So if we can wow. find out before we enroll them, how they do in scenarios based on the science and based on the role plays, almost an audition, if you will, we've been able to compress that success rate or increase that success rate tremendously, but also for the rep, they're finding out sooner, hey, you, you wouldn't be a fit here, which opens up the opportunities for them to find a job that they would be a fit in, as opposed to being in a pay for performance role for a number of months and failing. Love that. It sounds like a, uh, a very detailed process and you're going to, uh, to select the candidates who are really gonna be a great fit for the role and help train them and educate them. Um, I love the whole RAD model. It makes it super easy to remember. So retention, acquisition, and development. Uh, Neil, all of this sounds super exciting. Now, there's a couple of other things that I, you know, if we can squeeze them in, I also want to ask you about before, yes. I, before we carry on with our, with our days. I'd love to hear about your habits and rituals because one of the things that I get from you, it does every time I've been on a call with you, your energy is always high level. I know you're at the end of your day now and your energy is still there, it's still up. So tell us a little bit about your habits and rituals. What are some of the things that you do to, uh, keep your energy so high and uh, I keep doing what you do. Well, I appreciate that. And um, it's hot as heck here. The sun is blowing, the sun is setting. And I think number one, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm, I'm fortunate. I am in what Deepak Chopra calls your Dharma or your purpose in life. All right. So I love what I do. I'm blessed, you know, you know, most, if you will, I don't know what percentage of people there's work and there's life. I, you know, I, I love my wife. I love my children, but I love this. I love my career. I, I, I am blessed that, that I love it like a child or a baby. So I just, that energy exists from the moment I open my eyes because I look at my calendar and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm back to back all day. <laughs> I figured out ways how to go to the bathroom on the stand-up desk and how to eat during a call and all this stuff, right? So I don't say that like to impress you or whatever. It's just like, don't give up on your dharma, all right? The, the, the world we live in today, and especially for our children, there's no point in being stuck in something we don't love. Keep looking, keep exploring. All that being said, I am human. So, you know, I do, I'm, I'm, I'm subject to different things. So I'm really fortunate Deepak Chopra required of me when he hired me on, since I knew nothing about him. I did some yoga, um, but that was mostly to get the attention of my then girlfriend who became my wife. I never okay. meditated. Um, you know what I mean? And so, but he said, Hey, listen, you gotta, you gotta eat our cooking. So you've yeah. got to meditate. Ultimately I was on stage with him. Like you got to get certified to meditate teach meditation. Um, so I, I meditate every day. I have since 2004. I wake up before my alarm somewhere between five and 530. I meditate every day, every morning, and then most evenings. So when I'm done with this, this is the end of my day here. I'm going to go meditate. That's a powerful transition for me. I will miss some meditations, but it's like showering for me. All right. I may miss a shower here or there, but go a couple, three days without showering. No one wants to be around. Me, right. So meditation is an important piece. Um, and then other things, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm standing on a, a mat that um, has got like spikes to elevate my energy. No one can see behind me here, but I've got a, you know, I've got a rebounder. So just whether it's physical energy, just becoming aware um, there's, there's so many things that I do throughout the day 
But like you said, ritual is important. Starts and ends the day with meditation. Uh, before I go into bed at night, just get down on my knees and just be grateful for the abundance and blessings for the day. But I for your audience, it's like, you. find your purpose. It's, it's out there and life is too short to, to settle and do stuff uh, you know, that you don't like. There's infinite ways to make money. I love all of those suggestions. So be on purpose, you know, be living your dharma and that really helps. Uh, Matt with spikes is a great suggestion. The rebounder, great suggestion. The gratitude, great suggestion. Peeing at your stand-up desk. I, I'm not quite so sure about that one though, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's just because I know you so well. So you edit that one out if you need to. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Neil, if, uh, if the uh, audience wanted to be in contact with you or experience more of, of what you do, how would they uh, best get in contact with you? Yeah, so I, I'm happy to make myself available to any of your listeners in a one-on-one -on -way, one -on -one way. The best place to go, the easiest place to go, though, is levelupsalesteam.com. That's levelupsalesteam.com. There's a brief questionnaire in there um, that'll help me understand the best way to connect with you. Maybe we'll have you take a sales strengths identifier before I connect with you so that we can get the most meaning out of our time together. But that's uh, audience, if you're so inclined to, to, to learn some things personally, or if you have a team or a business, um, there's nothing that would fulfill me more, Kevin, than to be able to give back in some way for all that you've done for me to work with you know, your listeners. That's levelupsalesteam.com. It's uh, such a very generous offer and uh, any time you can get with Neil is, is very well spent. Uh, so if you have a sales team, I would 100% uh, would jump right on that uh, straight away. Uh, Neil, you've uh, provided so much wisdom uh, and knowledge as I expected today. Um, is there any, uh, any last thoughts or anything else you'd like to, uh, to share? Ah, uh, man, I just, you know, I'm just grateful to, to get to be on with you. Your questions were so on point. I, I think that that we covered it all. And I think the, the last thing I would share is we're all in some ways. So I, I in some way involved in quote unquote sales in involved in selling. And if I hope or my wish for you listeners and audience is that after hearing this interaction between Kevin and I, that you understand that you can just let that go. Hopefully your shoulders are relaxed and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't need to do or learn or study or spend money to become someone else. I actually just need to peel back the onions. And the, the, the best example I've heard of trust, right? So people buy from people they trust and respect. And Simon Sinek said it best is trust is the biological reaction that someone has our best interests in mind. So, you know, Kevin, you and I have developed a profound relationship. I trust you. I know you have my best interest in mind. This isn't something that is taught or trained or, or manipulated. It's just, it's, it's, it's in sitting and realizing I have everything I need to connect with other human beings. And if you get anything from this time we've spent together, my hope for you is it's that. And if you just be yourself and connect with other human beings, you'll enroll them if your product or service is a fit for them. I love that. Be yourself, connect with other human beings. Uh, it's such a beautiful message to end on. Neil, thank you so much. Uh, always amazing when we get to get to connect. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate you, man.